What's up, guys? This is Michael Anderson here with The Michael Anderson Show. Today, we're going to talk some A Song of Ice and Fire theory. We're going to talk about the House of the Undying and Danny's vision of her brother Rhaegar in the House of the Undying. I'm going to tell you exactly who is shown in this scene, who the baby is, why why most people may have not understood who the baby is or gotten that answer right. I think some people have thought this baby was someone that he actually isn't. Uh, so I'm going to reveal that to you. It's going to change the way you look at this story. It's going to change the whole scenario of the prince that was promised and show give you clarity on who that actually is. And I think this vision has huge implications on the end game of A Song of Ice and Fire and the show. So I'm going to play this clip for you of Danny's vision of her brother Rhaegar in the House of the Undying. Afterwards, I'm going to tell you exactly what's going on here. Go ahead and take a listen to this. Play cl pay close attention to Rhaegar's words and exactly what he says here. I will be back when it's over. Beyond loomed a cavernous stone hall, the largest she'd ever seen. The skulls of dead dragons looked down from its walls. Upon a towering barred throne sat a man in rich robes. An old man with dark eyes and long silvery gray hair. Let him be king over charred bones and cooked meat, he said to a man below him. Let him be the king of ashes, Drogon shrieked his claws digging through silk and skin. But the king on the throne never heard, and Danny moved on. Viserys was her first thought the next time she paused, but a second glance told her otherwise. The man had her brother's hair, but he was taller, and his eyes were a dark indigo rather than lilac. Aegon! he told a woman nursing a newborn babe in a great wooden bed. What better name for a king? Will you make a song for him? the woman asked. He has a song, the man replied. He is the prince that was promised, and his is the song of ice and fire. He looked up when he said it, and his eyes met Danny's, and it seemed as if he saw her standing there beyond the door. There must be one more, he said, though whether he was speaking to her or the woman in the bed, she could not say. The dragon has three heads. He went to the window seat, picked up a harp, and ran his fingers lightly over its silvery strings. Sweet sadness filled the room as man and wife and babe faded like the morning mist. All right. Now, when most people read this or hear about this scene, they view it in such a way that gives Rhaegar sympathy. They say something along the lines of, oh, poor sweet Rhaegar, he was so close to getting it right on the prince it was promised. He just had the wrong child. And people say this because Aegon, son of Elia Martell, died in the sacking of King's Landing, so obviously he can't be the prince that was promised, so Rhaegar got it wrong. I am here to tell you that Rhaegar did not get it wrong, and that he knew exactly which one of his children was the prince that was promised and Rhaegar was 100% correct in his assumption. The vision Danny sees in the House of the Undying is not of Rhaegar Targaryen and Elia Martell. This is a vision of Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark. And the Aegon child shown in this vision is not Aegon Targaryen, son of Elia Martell, who goes on to be known as Aegon the Sixth. This would be Aegon the Seventh, or Jon Snow. Rhaegar named Jon Snow Aegon also, after the first Aegon passed away. Rhaegar was a student of prophecy. 
he first thought that he was the prince that was promised, but realized later that he was to father the prince that was promised. This was the driving force behind his relationship with Lyanna Stark. He knew that his son Aegon of Elia Martell was not the prince that was promised. And then in order to bring about the birth of the prince that was promised, he had to forge ice and fire together. During this vision, Rhaegar looks at Danny and says, There must be one more. The dragon has three heads. What I think is going on here, a lot of people will say that Jon Snow is the third head of the dragon, Danny is the first head, and that the Aegon shown in this vision is the second. I don't believe that's the count that Rhaegar's going with. I think his count is Danny is the number one head of the dragon. Aegon, shown in the vision, which is Jon Snow, is the second head of the dragon, and that the third head of the dragon has yet to be revealed. Two possible candidates I have for the third head of the dragon are Tyrion Lannister and Jaime Lannister. Reasons why it could be Tyrion, I think the most, the best evidence that Tyrion could be the third head of the dragon is that if Tyrion is, both Tyrion, Jon Snow, and Daenerys all killed their mothers when they were born. And I think this is definitely some symbolism to, that goes back to the Azor High prophecies with Nisa Nisa and that whole story. I think there's a little bit of uh, foreshadowing in that. I do not believe Tyrion's a Targaryen, like some people, but if he is, that would also give credence to the theory that he is the third head of the dragon. You also have Tyrion's dragon dreams, which is something that we've only seen Targaryens have in this story. Uh, that's not to say that other people don't, but it's never been mentioned. I think Jaime is a good candidate for this because I believe he is the son of Ares II and Joanna Lannister. I believe that possibly during the time that's mentioned where, Ta where uh, during Tywin and Joanna's bedding, Ares takes liberties with her. That could have possibly been the time they were conceived. There are other times that work in the time frame of the show and the books that could possibly be when they were conceived. But I do think, especially the dream that Jamie has where his mother comes to him and tells him that your Lord Father had dreams that he would have a son who was a famous, I'm paraphrasing here, a famous strong knight and a daughter who would be queen. And Jamie tells her, you know, I... I am a knight and Cersei is queen and a tear rolled down Jamie's mother's face and she faded away. So I think that's the best evidence that Jamie and Cersei are not Tywin's children and Tyrion is his child. It is sort of a poetic justice that Tywin Lannister's only true-born son was a dwarf who he was embarrassed of and despised and hated and who eventually killed him. So I think that makes more sense story-wise. But the vision ends with the, with the quote, Sweet sadness filled the room as man and wife and babe faded like the morning mist. This is one reason people have always thought that this vision was of Elia Martell. And I do not think that proves anything. The use of the word wife here, I think, just proves that Rhaegar and Lyanna were married. And what that would mean for the story is that Jon Snow, or Aegon VII, as he is officially named, would be the true and rightful king of the Seven Kingdoms. I believe in the books it will come out that Rhaegar and Lyanna were married secretly. I think the location of this wedding was probably the Isle of Faces on the God's Eye. I think Bran is probably going to see this in a vision, and that's how we're going to learn about it in the story. I don't know if the show is going to go that in-depth in it, but I think before the end of this season or the beginning of the, uh, the eighth season, we will learn about a marriage between Rhaegar and Lyanna. I don't know whether Rhaegar had a polygamous marriage, which there is precedent in Targaryen history for that, or possibly he could have put Ellie away due to the fact that she couldn't have any more children. He may have gotten some sort of legal divorcement annulment where she couldn't produce any more children, and that was important to Rhaegar. 
I'm not really sure, but I do believe that when we see this vision in the House of the Undying of baby Aegon, we are looking at baby Jon Snow. And that this entire time there has been a glimpse of Jon, his mother, and his father, all three together in this, in this story, and we've just overlooked it. The whole part where Rhaegar says that his is the song of ice and fire, there is no other person in this story that represents ice and fire as well as John. So that's one of the reasons I think this is him. A, the first Aegon did not, he didn't have any sort of song of ice and fire that would make any sense. I don't see how Rhaegar, knowing as much as he does about prophecy and about the prince that was promised, could think that Aegon, the one that died in the sacking of King's Landing, could have been the prince that was promised. But uh, that's all I've got to say about this particular vision. Next video I will have, we'll be discussing the true identity of the Night King. And if you like this video, please leave some comments. Tell me whether I'm wrong or I'm right. Like the video, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.